I'm Sheila Sabine, and today I'm in the Montclair Hills with actually one of our most professional and amazing photographers. Tell us a little bit about what you do as an artist at home. Well, I've been photographing people for 25 years, and I've lived in this village for 30. So I feel like I'm pretty much the documentary artist of the whole neighborhood and beyond. And you, you show me this book. You want to hold up? Yeah, this was a book, book that I did as kind of an um, homage to this village that uh, provided a safe, loving place for my children as I raised four kids here. And it's just a black and white documentary, um, Natural Light, which I've always wanted to do, looking at all of the artists and retailers and merchants and people in, in our village. Montclair is just so bucolic. I had, felt like I had to capture everything that I saw. A father teaching his child how to ride a bike, or the Boy Scouts, or and I told the story of the merchants, and a lot of people didn't know those stories. They didn't know that the guy who runs the sports place has a daughter that's a second grade teacher. So it really opened up dialogue. You do something quite amazing. That is, you're able to capture people, complete strangers, because they come to you, like I did, for my business photographs. Mm -hmm. So it's an art. How do you do that? How do you capture a person on film? They're all nervous, right? They don't right. want to do it. So what do you right. do? Well, first of all, I have to do it. Because time is passing and moving, and people, children are growing, and... You know, many times I photograph a woman who says, I, no, I, I can't stand the way I look. And I say, honey, you look great. And in 10 years, you're going to look back at this picture and say, God, I was hot. Um, I usually joke a lot. I uh, distract. I even try to, to bore somebody just by taking so many pictures. They say the greatest, the greatest tool for a, a photographer is a really big trash can. So... <laughs> So we're, we're digital now, so it's And you have people easier. change postures and positions all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. A lot. To catch them off guard. So then you have a spontaneous image that isn't contrived. And, right, uh, right. So for example, smile, for with example. you, I said, look, look completely behind yourself, which is, you can't imagine this being a headshot. But then when you look back up, you're, mm -hmm. it's that second of engaging that, mm -hmm. that usually... Mm -hmm captures the best shots. So this is really your passion? Absolutely. And how did it start as a child? Or Well, my father was um, a photographer trapped in the body of an insurance agent, basically. And I didn't really, I, I knew he always had a camera in his hand, and most of the images of me, I'm holding a light meter as a, as a toy. Um, it wasn't until after he died that I really looked at his work and saw that he was passionate about similar things that I was. When I turned 18, he said to me, you know, Rini, you're a noticer. And I noticed that in you. And it's very common for Dutch, we're, we're Dutch, to be sensitive to light and shadow. I don't know if that's true or not, but it was a super romantic thing to say. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the family of, of woman, my first photographic book, which I I will show you now, because I adore it, because it was from Dad. And they're documentary black and white photos put to words like Bible verses or Shakespeare or Waldo Emerson. And I took the book in my room, and I went through the whole thing, and I just cried like a woman praying or a, a man at a steel, steel mill, or here's somebody working in a factory. It's these documentary moments that just astounded me. And I knew right then that that was exactly what I wanted to do.